everybody, my name is Ruby Wright and I'm an illustrator and thank you for sending your wonderful questions through. I'm going to answer as many of them as I can. You might be able to hear a train because my studio is right next to the train tracks. Um, so I hope it's not too loud. Also, one of our studio friends is a jeweller and she's doing some hammering, so you might hear that too. So first question. How would you describe the art that you make? So I'm making picture books at the moment and I do that using screen printing. So I use a screen like this and I draw my image on the screen and then I use a squeegee, which is one of these funny things, to squish the ink through. It's a really nice process. You should have a go at it if you, if you can. Um, and I build up my images in layers. So I'll show you one that I made. Um, so this is an image of some prehistoric fish and um, the blue layer was done on its own and then I did the pink layer separately and then the yellow layer separately from that. And then I put them all together actually on, um, on Photoshop on my computer. Uh, but you don't have to put it together digitally, you can do it all just using the screen print. But because I'm working on books and things have to change, it's really useful to be able to move stuff around. How does drawing make you feel? So I go out drawing every day. I try and draw every day if I can and I look at things and I draw from life. And I like to draw people mostly, or people in places, or people in slightly messy places. So I'm much more interested in drawing in the city um, in, even if it's near the bins or <laughs> in a playground or on the high street in the dark than I am in drawing the countryside. I love the countryside but it's sort of too beautiful and I'm more interested in people and how they interact with the stuff around them. Who is your favourite picture book illustrator and why would you recommend them to us? Well, when I was little um, I loved people like Maurice Sendak who wrote Where the Wild Things Are uh, that's one of my favourite books of all time. And John Birmingham, um, who wrote Mr Gumpy's Outing and The Shopping Basket. Um, and Mr Gumpy actually lives in a house that I think is the nicest house I've ever seen. It's got a veranda, which is that bit that you can sit underneath and drink your cup of tea and he can look at the river. <laughs> I think it's so lovely. I'd like to live in Mr Gumpy's house. Um, um, Raymond Briggs, um, The Snowman and Father Christmas is my favourite. He's so funny. I loved Tintin when I was um, younger. There's, um, I mean, there's so many books. Tuva Janssen, who wrote The Moomins, I think her work is so beautiful and I can see how she's inspired me now. She's a big inspiration, actually an influence. And I love her flat colours and her use of colour. And also the characters uh, are so, well, they're so strange, but they're so familiar. Do you know what I mean? Um, and as for people who are working now, I mean, there's incredible illustrators, I can't possibly nail it down to just one, but I'm going to mention three to you that I think it's worth having a look at. Um, the first is Daisy Hurst. She also uses screen print and she has um, lots of funny characters. These are monsters called Natalie and Alphonse and they live in a block of flats. Um, there's some very beautiful images in here and she's, she's just very, very funny. I think the way she um, illustrates is it got an incredible sense of humour and she's they're, they're quite odd <laughs> some of some of the um, things that happen but also in a very recognisable way so it's a lot of stuff about childhood imagination which I'm very interested in. Um, another person I love really love is um, Maisie Paradise Shearing she's called and this is a book called I'm Actually Really Grown Up Now it's about a little girl who she's decided that she's um, she's so grown up she can go to the party of her parents and she wants to stay up at the party that's lovely. And oh, the other person I'm going to mention is Helen Stevens, and she is um, she wrote um, How to Hide a Lion, and this is her book of um, fairy tales. They're written by Margaret Mayo, but fair, uh, Helen Stevens does the illustrations, and they're really beautiful. And Helen Stevens draws a lot with a stick, and um, I'll show you a little bit of drawing with a stick later, maybe. But um, you should all try drawing with a stick. It's really fun to do. So a lot of her lines, you see, she, she uses a stick to draw them. Stick dipped in ink. It's really fantastic. What is your favourite thing to draw with? So I usually take out my pencils, coloured pencils. I've made myself this special tool belt so I can wear them around my waist if I need to. Um, and I 
the ones I like the best are, um, they're made by Faber-Castell and they're called Polychromos and they're very, they've got a lot of pigment. So you don't need to press very hard to get a very nice deep colour. But I also use paint and I use ink a lot, um, but mostly I draw with coloured pencils. What are your favourite colours to use? Well, I always find that I come back to pink, yellow and blue, partly because you can mix them a little bit like primary red, yellow, blue. So you get a lot of, especially with screen printing, you layer a lot. So if you put a yellow layer on top of a blue layer, you're going to get a green. And um, that's really useful to me. So those are my favourite colours. Um, yeah, blue, pink, yellow. We like your animation for self-repairing cities. Was it fun to make or was it a bit tricky? The answer to that is both. Um, so it was a stop frame animation, um, which means that every single frame of the, of the film has to be made by hand and move. And I made it with an amazing animator who's also in my studio called Levan Tozashvili, and um, he did all the really hard work. So I just made the sets. Um, so we made, I made some buildings like this, in fact, and I thought I could look through and, and say hello to you, but uh, there's a piece of paper on the back. Look, it's just made out of cardboard, really. There's some wiring there because the lights, um, the lights work. But that was really, really enjoyable to do because once upon a time, I thought I might quite like to make set, uh, sets for um, theatre design. But um, I never did that in the end. But it was really fun to do that. And also, I really love model villages. Have you ever been to a model village? Um, they're kind of magic because you get to walk around and feel like a giant. But the thing that um, also had to happen for the film is that we had to cut out the main character. And I, I, I did all the cutting out, actually. So I drew her and then Levan had to move her on the computer each frame so that we she'd walk. So he made every single picture like that. And then we got them printed by a printer and then I had to cut them all out. And we have, I think there's 300 and something of them. So you can see that there she is waving her arm. Can you see that? So it was fun and very tricky. It's 2050. Crystal lives in a place where robots are continuously mending the neighbourhood because this is a self-repairing city. Potholes are mended by drones. Water leaks are fixed by bots that patrol underground pipes. Cracks in bridges are automatically fixed and when a street light goes on the blink, a drone is quickly dispatched to repair it. You have made banners for Mint Street Music Festival in the past. What do you like about where you live? Well, most of all, I love the people where we live. I think we've got an amazing community. I love the school and I loved um, helping out at playgroup when my children were little. And I love um, going to Mint Street after school and seeing all the children and the families there. And I love the river and I love the market and I love the Tate. Um, but I don't love the tall tower blocks that they're building. Uh, because they block out the light and they're going to be very expensive for people to live in. So I'd rather they built some more houses that were affordable for people to live in, to buy and to rent. Do you listen to music when you make art or do you prefer to work in silence by yourself? I listen to music and I listen to podcasts and I listen to the radio. What do you listen to when you like to draw? What do your friends and family think about what you do? Well, my family, uh, my mum and dad are both artists. My dad's a photographer and my mum is a sculptor. Um, and so they were very encouraging of me going to art school, which was great. So I never really questioned whether I should be an artist or not. And my friends and family are lovely and my children are supportive and my husband is amazing. So I'm super lucky um, that I am doing something that my family understand and enjoy. I love art and I think it would be so fun to do it for my job. Have you got any advice for me at secondary school? Well, at secondary school, hopefully you'll have a lovely art teacher um, who will encourage you and you will take it for your uh, GCSE. So that's really important to keep doing it. But don't just do it at school. I would say do it at home as well. And if you can, try and draw every day. Try and draw from observation every day by looking at what you're seeing and drawing it and also from your imagination 
Uh, so you could come up with designs for things or character, could design characters or imagine worlds. Um, think about uh, things that you're interested in, draw that. <laughs> Work out what you're interested in and draw those things. Also make stuff. I used to, um, I did sculpture actually at art school, so everything I made was three dimensional. So I did a lot of sewing and clay and I made things out of food. Um, I made my own clothes. So those are all really helpful things. And then because we live in London, we have amazing galleries um, that you can go and see mostly for free. A lot of them are for free. You don't need to spend money. Um, so you could even decide that um, you're going to go to the Tate and you're just going to look at one work of art and really look at it and focus on it. And um, or you could go and look at everything and just absorb it all. But some I know somebody who used to go every lunchtime, he would go to a gallery and look at one painting, a different painting each day. Um, and that seems like a really lovely thing to do. So look at the work of artists. You could go and see um, degree shows from art schools. So those are open to the public and you can go and see what young people are making. And that's really exciting. Um, and then when you decide to go and be an artist and you want to go to art school and you go to your interview and they say to you, um, have you seen any exhibitions lately? You'll be able to say, yes, I've seen this and that and this and that. And I love this person because of this and I'm not so sure about that. Um, so just absorb it as much as you possibly can. And it's not a, um, it's not a job that's going to necessarily pay very well, <laughs> but um, there are ways of making it make money for you. So um, go and talk to artists about how they make their living, if you can. Uh, come and talk to me. Um, ask anyone you know who makes art how they can make their living and you'll find a way. Mm -hmm.